You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. And I'm excited for these next this one and the next couple of weeks as well because we're going to do a little bit of a series here. So sorry, people not in Hoquiam. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sorry. I know why Daniel's excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next three weeks are three of my uh, favorite kids to cover when we were covering a lot of basketball. This is this was kind of like from the area the era that we were at like the height of covering mm-hmm. basketball games together, which was a lot of fun on the radio after that. Then you had to go do newspaper stuff and it just well, cause fall apart. Like, it work, fell apart. You ruined it. Work gets in the way of all the things I want to do. Yeah. The team of realtors at Oli Penn real estate, wish you and your family good health during this stay home, stay safe time. Their team has health and safety measures in place to protect you and everyone involved in the process. If you're thinking about selling your home, now is a great time. There are more buyers than available homes. Many homes are still receiving multiple offers and are selling for above asking price. Oli Penn Real Estate will help you put the most money possible in your pocket, in less time, without the hassle. Visit SellMyHarborHome.com to get your home market ready. The Oli Penn team is ready to work for you. So our only Penn Real Estate <laughs> Athlete of the Week this week is Jace Barner, who played for the Hoquiam Grizzlies, and we are looking at his basketball career there. And really, first and foremost, I want to say that this kid maybe was maybe was my favorite player of this team to watch, and he didn't quite get all of the publicity that the other two guys on this team did. When we broadcasted, we tried to give him every ounce of credit we possibly could. <laughs> yes, because he, well, and the thing was, is we looked at him. I remember thinking, man, he does all the little things right. Every single basketball IQ play that he could make, he did make. He was always in the right spot for their senior season was their big guy. And he wasn't that big. Mm -hmm. And yet you saw him absolutely work big guys in the paint. Just with athleticism. Yeah, athleticism and smarts and knowing how to control the glass, even without being the biggest guy in the court. And Justin, I say that thinking, yeah, he didn't score as many points as everybody else. He was still Hoquiam's fifth all-time scorer when he was done. He's the number five all-time scorer at Hoquiam. And your normal thought was, yeah, he's probably the third option, at least the first three years. His senior year, he was probably closer to the number two option when you look for scoring, but he scored 958 points in My his high school My first thought career. when I looked at this was, you couldn't get 42 more points, I know. Chase. I was. I couldn't <laughs> get 42 more points, Jace. I saw that, too. I saw 958, and I was like, oh, 1,000 would have just been so much better, Jace. <laughs> Let's change it. Let's pick somebody else. Hey. <laughs> You can get out of here. Uh, he did that in 96 games, so averaging also just a bummer, just under 10 points a game. Oh, geez, but that's on, for – I mean, he started as a freshman. Really, though, when I think about Jace, um, like you said, he was the guy who did all the little things. He was he was kind of a stat sheet stuffer. You know, he'd be the guy who maybe had 11 points, but he'd have eight rebounds and two blocks and three steals. Like he would have, he would very rarely be the guy who put up 20 plus points, but he would more often be the guy who did a whole bunch of other stuff. But I think um, when you said how he would beat people with smarts, the thing that I remember the most about Jace is that he could always elevate to the level of competition. And there was never anybody on the floor who knew the game better than him. For example, Hoquiam's senior season, they lost that heartbreaker we broadcasted from Ugh. the Sun Dome in Yakima. I'll so never <laughs> forget that. We broadcasted Ugh. that game. They lost on a ridiculous jumper from the corner that this kid from what school? Freeman? What? Who do they play? Was it Freeman? I, I can't, can't remember. remember now. They lost blocked, the game. I've blocked him out of my memory. We have this video. They lost the game in one of the most heartbreaking ways possible. Yeah. But during that game, which was a really great game all the way through, I remember thinking, there's a lot of great players on this team. You know, Jack Adams is a great scorer. Jared's a great player. There's really good players on this team. But on offense, 
good things are only happening when Jace touches the ball. When he had the ball in his hands at some point on an offensive possession, he was either getting an assist or making a pass that leaded to a pass, or he would get the defense to, con- to you know, contract the way that he wanted them to and then get the ball out where it needed to go. I felt like he needed to touch the ball on every offensive possession because good things happened when he touched the ball. It felt like the entire offense ran more smoothly, and it didn't yeah. mean that he was scoring, as you just mentioned. Right. But most of the time, a decision that he would make kind of facilitated how the rest of it would move. Right. Even just people moving in the correct spots. I mean, he was basically like playing point guard from the post position. That's what it felt like. He was facilitating everything as the game was going on. He probably also could have been a greater scorer if he was called upon to do that. Yeah. But he didn't really have to because he played with Jack. Yeah. Who, you know, he's going to be part of our series. Yeah. But Jack was, is he the all-time leading scorer? Yes. He's the all-time leading scorer in Hoquiam High School history. So when you play with a guy like that, and there's another player on the team that was also up on that list, you're not called on to be the yeah. best scorer because you have other skills. Like he had other, he had so many other skills that he had settled into that role so comfortably that he was so valuable to them being on the floor. You mentioned, I mean, Jared, yeah, Jack, Jared, and Jace, the yeah. three Jays. They were all on the same team, all in the top five for all-time leading scorers. And I know that's a bit of a spoiler, but I mean, that's crazy to think about, and that allowed. A player like Jace, who would have been a star player, I feel like on multiple other teams, especially teams in that league. Probably would have got those 42 other points he needed. He probably would have scored (laughs) a ton of points. Like, say he was playing for Tenino. Like, they would have just let him run the show. Shots fired at the Beavers. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean, though? Like, it was a very interesting occurrence that... He wasn't a team's number one option. Like, that's how good he was. And just so much fun to watch. And we covered them pretty strongly since they were freshmen because they were making playoff runs as freshmen. Like, I remember a game against Castle Rock in the district tournament where it went – was that the triple overtime game? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and it was just crazy. And they were freshmen at the time. We also broadcasted, I believe, their – that – those three guys' very first Myrtle Street rivalry game at yeah. Sam Ben Jim. Yeah, that was a fun game. That was a really fun game. I remember game. that I'm one distinctly. I remember who Jared was started in that game. Yeah. I remember that Jared started because he was playing point guard and he was going through a bit of a learning curve on, and as were his teammates about, you know, the best way to help somebody when they get trapped. That was some good Aberdeen teams, too. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. was that when Barnes was the coach? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Like, those were some good Aberdeen teams, and to see these three freshmen. And I remember Jace, that's another thing. Since Jace was kind of listed as more of a big guy, Mm -hmm. as a freshman, he was even smaller. than. I mean, like I already mentioned, he's not a super tall for a big guy at that level. And yet I still remember him coming in as a freshman in that game and being like, okay, this kid needs to play. Mm -hmm. Like, he might be outsized at this point, but you could see it that they were better even then when he was on the floor as a freshman that year. And it's not like it's a Hoquiam program that hasn't had talent to where you have to throw freshmen out on the floor. Yeah. No, they got on the floor because they were good. Mm-hmm. It wasn't because there was just a, la- a void of talent in the in the glasses in the classes ahead of them. Th- those were good teams. You know, we covered the teams that we followed into the playoffs more. Like that's just what happened. We'd split it up pretty evenly throughout the regular season, mm-hmm. you know, covering both Grizzly girls and boys, Bobcats girls and boys, Elma, Monty. But the teams in that era when we were covering a lot of basketball, I mean, you looked at Hoquiam's boys and Monty's girls. And we got to know, I feel like we got to know those team teams and programs really, really well because we went on these long trips mm-hmm. following them around where it wasn't as much about covering both teams like we would do, you know, when Hope yeah. Williams playing Aberdeen. We're covering both teams. Mm-hmm. But when we go on the playoffs, it's we're covering this team. And those were just amazing memories watching those playoff games against, you know, these crazy teams. And we could... You know, I already mentioned once on this show, I like being a homer, and it was a lot of fun in the playoffs yeah. when I'm following both Hoquiam and Monty, and, you know, I can get into the game, and it probably, I'm not sure if it helps the broadcast, to be honest, because I probably get too emotional. <laughs> no, I think people like it. Like, especially, like, watching, gosh, a couple of different emotional experiences. One, watching 
the Jordan Spradlin senior year Mm -hmm. play against Lyndon Christian, that was really tough for me, for us to watch because we were watching it happen again and it was brutal. And then the other one, you already mentioned it. Hoquiam losing in that buzzer beater at the Sundome. I apparently somehow we lost the recording of that game at the radio station, which is horrifying to me because like it was this class of kids and it wasn't just Jace, Jared and Jack. It was also Zach Spradlin mm-hmm. and Anthony Nash Nash. Yeah. And I mean, and uh, Ryan Espidal. Yeah. And it's these kids that we got to know and they all made huge and contributions probably, throughout that season. They're probably that class of Hoquiam kids. There probably wasn't another class of kids that we had covered more mm-hmm. over the entirety of their high school career. Exactly. Cause we, we, Got to know a big group of them when they were freshmen, mm-hmm. and then a couple more were added as yeah. sophomores. And by the time those were juniors, I mean, we followed them on a state run when they were all juniors, too. They yeah. made it to the Sun Dome two years in a row. I'll never forget Ryan Espidal's behind the back saving the ball from going out of bounds and Elma playing against the center. Yeah. That went right to, I think it was Jace. Yeah. Perfect pass for a lay in, you know, and you're just looking at him like he's a magician. But that game was brutal because you saw the slow start. You knew that it was just miserable, and yet they were the better team. You knew that they were the better team. They clawed their way back, and then finally they took the lead, and you were like, oh, thank goodness they overcame it. And you just had the feeling they were going to win. And then when it was snatched out, like, I'm I'm pretty sure I yelled no. We were like, – you did. Yeah, like, just we, on the broadcast, just yeah. shot goes up, No! We, like, we, what uh, just happened? Man, this can't happen. You know, Daniel, we've broadcasted a lot of games together, a lot of basketball games together. That was the only time that I can ever remember that you were so devastated that I had to <laughs> talk. Like, you went, no, and then you just stopped talking. And I had to <laughs> explain what had happened yeah. and, like, pick up the broadcast for you. Like, you were legitimately, emotionally devastated yeah. by that loss. It was brutal. Yeah. Like, I'm going to full let my Grizzly show here. <laughs> that was... You're a Grizzly? Yeah. That was brutal. Like, yeah. And it was because of the relationships with all the kids that we had garnered up in, in, in that point. Like, I felt it so much more than just a random basketball team. I feel like you're getting sad thinking about it. I am. Can you tell? (laughs) Anyway, I digress. Jace Varner, Holy Pen Real Estate Athlete of the Week. Congratulations on the highest honor you've ever earned. (laughs) You just had to do it again. I got so devastated (laughs) thinking about that game that I stopped talking. Happy to help out. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, bro. No, Jace is – and the other thing is Jace is an awesome guy who I still talk to when I see him around and probably going to – he's going to school right now, but I would be shocked if he wasn't a basketball coach around here Mm -hmm. as soon as he gets the opportunity, and I think he'll be a great one. 